Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Taz. Yo, Welcome finally. Back, sir. Well, finally, first of all, his, name is Dave. his name is Dave yeah, Anderson. Here. But I'm saying, every time I'm here, you're not here, Envy. Mm-hmm. What is it? I thought I owed you money, Taz. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you do, but you're See, welcome. that's why I've been ducking you. <laughs> you're welcome. I gave you ADF. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, you sure did. I really did. Yeah. How much was ADF? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Let me tell you something. Priceless. You ain't here with, you with your shades on like you a pimp. No, no. I, I, so what you say? No, 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 no. My mom will kill me, so I'm going to take them off now. Okay. I gave you ADF. I gave you ADF. I gave you ADF. I ain't even charged you. You can charge for that. You charge for Eddie's ass. I mean, come on. (laughs) Don't act like I'm not a silent contributor. Now, let's talk about David Anderson. You have BullyCon. Yes. So explain to everyone what BullyCon is. All right, so here's the thing, right? There's a whole lot of people out here playing at business. There's a lot of folks who want the opportunity to really start, grow, expand something greater than themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a big advocate on legacy. And what I found when I retired from radio was that there were people who just didn't understand that you have to do things like bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. You have to actually grow a list. You have to build a fan base. You mm-hmm. have to actually do some work. It is much harder when you don't have the comfort of a check and um, health care and things of that nature. And so I created BullyCon for the opportunity for us as black people to have a safe space in order to really understand, ask those questions and get answers. You know, none of that beach ball, uh, mega mix of the black eye, please playing, let's get it started. Real <laughs> brass tacks type of situation. And so mm-hmm. that's where BullyCon came from, out of a necessity to help my people. So what exactly is BullyCon? Like what, what what would they be learning at BullyCon? Man, everything that you can think of from how to handle your taxes, how to grow your following, how to give a correct speech, how to uh, approach the press, you know, marketing tips, social strategies. You know, I do a lot of tech stuff, and mm-hmm. so I'm also going to be doing that. Not to mention, people have never learned how to make an effective pitch. Mm-hmm. You know, pitch, close up, sell, repeat did well. Thank you guys, by the way. But it did so well because people did not understand the importance of presenting themselves in a way where it's, hey, I'm great. No, damn that. Here's your problem. Let me help you fix it. Mm-hmm. And so we do that. So we're having a pitch for your life contest, which comes with a $15,000 one-year uh, coaching package and a trip to Thailand. Because it's that important. Like, once you actually get success, you need to be able to go out and enjoy the fruits, Mm -hmm. you know, and be in front of people who can actually help you. You know, there's going to be a lot of money in that room, and so I want people to actually have an opportunity to really get it popping, especially young people. Now, where's this going to be at? It's going to be at the uh, Courtyard Marriott on City Ave and Presidential, literally up. In Philly. (laughs) Yeah, in Philly. Philly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, half a block away from uh, Power 99. Now, this year, you're also honoring someone. Yeah. So let's talk about who's being honored this year. Wow. Um, honoring a lot of people. Um, honoring David Banner. Mm-hmm. The God David Banner. Oh, man, like, what up, King? Yeah, I, I knew David Banner 16, 17 years now. And the thing of it was, he's still the same person in his work ethic. Mm-hmm. You know, he came in and he was hanging his poster. And I was like, I'm like, David Banner, you hang your own poster? He said, if you're not willing to hang your own poster, you don't need to have the deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's important because he's one of those people that actually walks his talk and he cares about his people. So that was important to me. Chuck Creekmore from All Hip Hop. Hey, mm-hmm. Chuck. He's being Chuck? honored. You know, if Charlemagne shows up, he'll be honored. If not, <laughs> just you know. to show up? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, not just to show up, but <laughs> I'm going to be honest, though. Like, when, when the industry turned its back on me, those two, Eddie F., Charlemagne, mm-hmm. they, they stayed with me. They actually, you know, looked out for me. And Why so did they turn back on you? Oh, bro. You know, you know, you know problematic. To, Taz used to be a producer for the Ricky Smiley Show. Mm-hmm. Amongst other things. Amongst other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm problematic. Because so I Charlemagne, have... he's very problematic. When, no. I, when I first heard BullyCon, I thought it was about bullies. I was like, we need to put Charlemagne in this to, to really fix him <laughs> up. That's what I really thought. Like, go ahead. No, I mean, the thing of it is, when you do things like want to grow a path, like I came just, I was a little bit too early with certain things. You know, they came and he sat in the room and said, you know what, your podcast is problematic because there's a gray area there. We don't know if it's you driving it or if it's us driving it. I'm like, you hired me because I had this beforehand and you wanted to know how to get it. So now that I've gotten it and I've bought this to you, now I'm a problem. Mm. Or the other part of it is I'm just going to be very honest. I'm black. You know, this company, and I love this company. Thank God for the opportunities that this company has given me. Um, but what I'm company? Gonna, oh, I heart. I heart. I okay. Heart. Um, but I'm going to be honest. And it's problematic of what happens to us in radio as black people. A lot of times the quote unquote urban jocks put 
the lights on and keep them on, but we're always the most scrutinized, we're always the most taxed, we're almost the most timed. Mm -hmm. You know, I was this company's first director of social media. Before me, they were social networking managers, mm -hmm. you know, and I had, a, I had a white counterpart who would literally not be there. She would leave her door open and go about do what she did. I got engaged, my, uh, my fiance, who's now my wife, would you know need me to pick her up a little bit early but they were like you know you're leaving a half hour early i'm like but i'm here at 4 30 every day mm -hmm. and i'm not doing a morning show you know what i'm saying there's a standard there's a black tax that mm -hmm. happens um in this industry and so it's like ah yeah i'm not really feeling that so basically you're doing three three times as much work as everybody else ten ten times much without work a doubt for less pay Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You know good and hell well. There's been stations where the uh, the country station or the talk station is last on the dial, last in the ratings. You number one, but they bowling out the gym. You know, unless you're in syndication or unless you're in upper management, it's, it's hard body. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Love the business, but I had to leave that part of it. And I thank God for that because if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't be coaching clients. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. So, mm -hmm. so you, you still man, got love for radio, though. I You're love a radio, radio. guy. Yeah. Read, I, look, man, the, before I did anything, I did radio. I started mm -hmm. radio when I was nine years old. Like, I'll never not love what this business does, the, the ability to convey a message with just your, 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 your voice. Like, there's nothing like it. Now, let's talk about this 20-second elevator pitch that you discuss. Mm. Give us a 20-second elevator pitch about BullyCon. Okay, hold on. I'm going to wait till that gets to five, four, three, two, one. Back in the day, we used to have to codify things. And so BullyCon is an acronym. Black, unapologetically living and loving yourself, controlling our narrative. Black people in business need to understand the importance of growing a business, starting a business, and having the tools. Come through, pitch for your life, get $15,000, and actually walk away with some meaningful relationships and a whole lot of education. BullyCon.info. Go get it. CashTheseBars.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It might have been 19 seconds. <laughs> you was only about 18 and a half. I give myself the extra two just for, Woo. you know, shits and gigs. Man, mm -hmm. Taz, why is it important to have a business mentor when pursuing a life of entrepreneurship? You know, it's like, why is it important to have a father or a mother? You know, because people who have come before you can say, ah, 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 you're about to fall in that hole. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't have someone to show you what it is you're need, you need to avoid, you will never avoid it. And you'll just, you'll keep hitting your head. You know, there are people who want to go to YouTube University and Google University, and that's fine. I'm not knocking it, but you're going to get there a lot later than the rest of my clients, you know, and, and I, think that's, I think that's important. Now, I need to be clear. Mentorship is something that a lot of us tend to use because we don't want to pay someone mm -hmm. to teach us what it is we need to know. Yeah, you don't want to say call them a consultant. Right. <laughs> I, I, I'm a coach <laughs> consultant because that's what you're Googling, but at the end of the day, cut the check, mm -hmm. you know, because you'll spend... Uh, 80, 100, $150,000 on an education that you nine times out of 10 are not going to use unless you're doctor, lawyer, architect, accountant, mm -hmm. you know, but listen, I got multiple degrees. I did very well in school, but at the end of the day, what I learned being a businessman trumps all of that, mm -hmm. period, you know, and we can talk, you know, about theories and what you believe on education, but I got 27 million reasons why brass tax works, mm -hmm. period. And so mentorship is vital. Like, wouldn't you want a god if you want a jungle? Damn right. Period. This is the jungle. These are the badlands, especially in Trump's America. Like, we black. There is no way around that. How do you know when you should pay someone, like you said, for coaching and consulting, or you do need a, or you should get a mentor for free? Because it is hard sometimes because people are trying to mm -hmm. get paid out here. Yes. So how do I know somebody's a good person for me to come to? Like, okay, I should pay this person for their consulting because a lot of times you look at it as people get taken advantage of. Yes. In that way, also. Mm -hmm. So that's a hard balance. Well, here's the thing: anybody can buy a YouTube ad. Anybody can go to Enterprise Luxury Rentals and get themselves a Lambo. Anybody can go to an Airbnb and get a nice house. The thing of it is, when you look at what someone has done, you ought to be able to find receipts, as they say. Mm -hmm. You know, you can Google what we've done. You can Google where we've been. And I also think that there needs to be someone who's willing to step up and create a low barrier to entry. And that's why I'm also doing what I call my Inner Circle Boot Camp, which is literally 68 cents a day. So it's 247 for the year. You get my team. You get us to coach you. It's a scaled down version of my $15,000 inner circle, obviously, but I'm making it so simple that you have no excuse. And I'm going to take 100 people and I'm literally going to find out if I can help all 100 people quit their jobs in the course of a year just on $247. You know, and so how so, much are the courses? Um, it's $247 for the year. Mm -hmm. You know, so that breaks down to 68 cents a day. 
You know, so to me, that's that. Not to mention, I'm also going to throw in a ticket to this year's BullyCon and a ticket to next year's BullyCon mm-hmm. because it's that important. So now there's no more excuses. You know, now if you want to go follow people who say they love black people and then they turn around and say, I want permission to say the N-word and you still think they're great, that's your business. I mean, I mean who doesn't like Grant Cardone? I don't, but okay. You know what I'm <laughs> Let's saying? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I he... mean, Grant Cardone got on his pro- or got on his podcast on video mm-hmm. and said, I just want somebody to make it cool for me to say the N-word. Mm. You know, then he goes and he tells people, well, the reason that rappers and ball players are broke is because, well, they just buying gold chains. I'm sorry, if you turn on CNBC, they're always saying buy gold. Gold is not the problem. Maybe it's that 8% deal that they got and they have to pay everybody out of that 8%. Maybe it's the manager that's bleeding them dry. Maybe it's the agents that are bleeding them dry. But you're painting a picture and you're saying that black people just don't get it and you're so wise and you're so this and you're so that, but you're using codified language. You know, and and to me that 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 that's pussyfied, basically. By, by the way, nobody gets it if they don't have financial literacy. I don't care no. what race you are. No. You know what I'm saying? If Not you at give all. you give somebody a million dollars, ten million dollars when they never was used to having no money, they're gonna find a way to okay. If you're broke in the two square feet of real estate you got between your ears, you're gonna be broke whether you got the money or not. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that's just the bottom line for me. There's a lot of a lot of sharks, a lot of people who are predatory who just don't do right by people and they never get called out for it. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I do a lot of seminars for real estate, and I try to yeah. teach people real estate seminars. I, I like your videos, by the way, man, when you showing the properties. And we, and we break it down to people, and, and we do it there, and we actually attend our seminars. We actually teach, mm-hmm. we take mentors, we right. take mentees, we take them around, and we really show them, because we really try to encourage people. But a lot of people do these seminars, and they do these things. They mm-hmm. charge minorities especially, mm-hmm. people who, they sell them dreams. Yep. Um, charge them a lot of money, right? And a lot of times, the people that they're trying to come see is not even there. Yeah. And to see them, they have to pay an additional five thousand yeah. dollars, an additional ten thousand dollars for that. Now, BullyCon, how much is BullyCon for people out there? Uh, BullyCon, the uh, we have we have two packages. You have the VIP package, which is one ninety seven, which is extremely mm-hmm. low cost, and then just for the main day, which is Saturday, July twenty seventh, it's ninety seven dollars. You can even put in uh, the discount code BULLY mm-hmm. at checkout, and you'll get a discount on it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm trying to make it extremely simple. I've also bought out a block of tickets, so first come, first serve. Um, if you want to get at me, you can email me, Dave at businessbullyshow.com, and whoever wants those free tickets, I'll give them up. Not a problem. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you balance it for ki- people who still want to go to school? Because your daughter is going to Yes, Howard. she's going to Howard, yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So how do you right. balance it for people who still want to go to school and teach them entrepreneurship? Here's the thing. The problem with society, especially in America, is different than any other developed country in the world. Every other developed country in the world, home is the education and school is the icing on the cake. Here we put everything on school and it's not about our children. It's about saying, oh, my baby's going here and she got herself a 4.0. But if she's out and she's broke, that's a problem. And so we put too much emphasis on on school and not emphasis enough on self-development, personal development, Mm -hmm. uh, self-awareness, financial esteem. Like, I'm waiting for the course where you actually learn to balance a checkbook. I ain't see it in high school, didn't see it in middle school, I've been saying didn't that see it in elementary time. school. Curriculum I don't see that. Mm-hmm. The curriculum will never change because you are not going to get financial freedom from the people who choose to oppress you. Mm. Period. And until you catch that, you're going to have a problem. That's why I'm bringing in Reza Islam. I could have went and, and tried to get the minister, but I wanted people. Nobody on my stage is over 50 mm-hmm. because I didn't want a bunch of old people pontificating about old ways because 2019, we're facing different problems. You know, and even me having an adult child now, like my kid is facing things I never had to worry about. I grew mm-hmm. up without the Internet, you know. Yeah, we've, we've all seen euphoria. Yeah. These problems. Yeah. <laughs> you're just yeah. Out here. But I still say old men for counsel, young men for war. You yes. know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot of times the more things change, they kind of like staying the same in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I think that there is still there's still some value in getting your hands dirty. There's mm-hmm. still some value in actually going out here and getting it. And what we do is no one talks about the fact that the job is the job. 18 months is the average lifespan of anybody at any job, on average. 60% of African-American women will go their entire careers and not ask for a raise. That is a problem. 96% of my clients are black women. Mm -hmm. 96% of my staff are black women. You wanna know why? Because as great as people might think I am as an entrepreneur, I will never know what it is to be a black woman entrepreneur. So I surround the people I coach with people who look like them. The Mm -hmm. same way we should surround our communities with police that look like them Mm -hmm. and our schools with teachers that look like them. 
not only do they say that black women don't ask for raises as much as they should, they also don't negotiate their salaries at all when you get a job. So it is something that we have to learn how to do. Mm-hmm. Remember, Envy, when I was telling you I got a raise at work because I asked for a raise at Sirius? Yep. And I was like, um, and the only reason I did it was because I read an article about it yeah. in a women's magazine about how to ask for a raise. And so I followed everything it said, and it actually worked out, and I got a 40% raise. Damn. It's a good look, yeah. It was a good, yeah, it was a good article. But I do try to pay it forward all the time, so I mm-hmm. always talk about how to ask for a raise and the things that you need to do, because I always say you got to ask for a raise not because you need one, but because you deserve one. Absolutely. And it's show why. Absolutely. But tell them how they can get tickets and everything about the BullyCon again. All uh, right. And Absolutely. So uh, you can go to BullyCon.info if you just want to get the regular tickets. If you'd like the opportunity for my team to coach you um, and you don't have the budget, um, we're okay with that. Just go ahead to thebusinessbully.com and you can get two tickets to BullyCon this year's and next year's and get a year's worth of coaching for two forty seven at 68 cents a day. Uh, real quick, I wanted to shout out a young man. You know, last year we started Black Boys Win and my buddy James Petit, he's 26 years old. He, um, You've heard of the game Cards Against Humanity? Mm-hmm. Well, each yeah, of you has yeah. a box of cards. It's called Couple Up. So you get with your boo thing, you get with your mom, you get with your friends and you guys play and you find out how much you really know about these people, how much you can really get into these people. But one thing I really want to stress before we wrap is that everybody who is doing this, the down to the caterers, down to the videographers, everybody is black. Everybody is black because that's important. You need to be able to see actual examples of people who are winning. Right. You know what I'm saying? And when people are like, well, how did you get to 27 million? I'm like, no, my clients got to 27 million. I'm the coach. Phil Jackson didn't score one point, but he old, sure enough got a lot of championships. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is, man. So bullycon.info, go to thebusinessbully.com uh, for that uh, inner circle um, group um, deal. So I'm excited, man, and I thank well, you guys. What I love about this is this has been you long as I've known you. Yeah. And that's been like, what, I don't know, 15, 16 15, 16 years, 16 years now, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. this, is, this is what you've been on since I've known you. So I know it's consistent. I know you really are who you say you are. Absolutely, man. That's the only way to be, man. It's, it's too hard out here to be fake, mm-hmm. you know? And it's too easy to be found out. Like, you have Google. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could fool you guys, but I can't. <laughs> I mean, I can't fool mm-hmm. Forbes. I can't fool Huffington Post. I can't fool USA Today. Like, at some point, you got to just give it to me for the sake of giving it to me. And you can take Eddie back, man. You're an Eagles fan. You can take Eddie back anytime. <laughs> right. I'm, a, I'm an Eagles fan. What you trying to say? See, here you come with that light. It was so nice when you weren't here for the past three years. <laughs> The past three years. <laughs> like, yeah. It was great. Every time I'm here, you're not here. You even sent the text to you like, how come it's not light-skinned people win? Um, because you already have the rock. Mm. That's why. Like, I'm just, I'm just... And good luck with everything, too, for real. Thank you. Your you, you coming? Real, Howard, not for fake. Just, just good luck. <laughs> you, you coming? Your daughter going to Howard, just good luck. You know? is he, are you going to honor Oh, wow. Are you going to honor oh, 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 the, the false The false HU? Listen, I'm listen. I feel hey, like we every, got, hey, we got everybody wins. Okay, you can't yeah, do that to I'm, him. No, I'm just. I got. I got to pick a team. <laughs> I just. just, I, I, just, just say, I'm just saying. Good luck. I wish you the best. You know how would you know? Good luck. Just holler if you need me. You know if you if you want to switch it to Hampton. Cool. Do you, your, do your kids going to Hampton? Yes. All of them. I don't know. We'll see. Your kids aren't even in school. What are you yes. talking about? Yes. <laughs> Your kids ain't even made a decision. See, light skin, you said like, that light skin yes. privilege yeah, just come no, out. No I want y'all to put the camera on every. Look at how that light skin privilege just came out. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You're allowed to make a point. Better make her own choice. I hope so. I just say like there that. There you go. That's so. better. I hope so. They've been pushing that direction, but we'll see. Are they Are they trying to get in the radio or real estate? What are they doing? Uh, real estate. You know, I'm trying to push them in real estate. I'm, I'm teaching them the game, teaching them the business, teaching them how to do it. You know, I didn't learn. You know, my parents didn't, knew nothing about no. investing. Yeah, none of so, us, none of our parents. But that's the, and that's the whole idea. I just want to make sure our community, on a serious note, I wanted to make sure our community knows how to. You know, yeah. a lot of a lot of us don't own those those areas and those blocks that we live on, and we're getting bought out, and then when we come back, they're raising the rent on us. Absolutely. So we got to make sure that we know how to hold our own. We own our own stores, own our own places that we shop, because we're the only community that, you know, you look up, Look at a black community. You see a pizzeria, an yep. Italian restaurant. You'll see a Chinese food store. You see all these different places, mm-hmm. but you won't see our stuff in any other neighborhoods. Can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. All right. So, is it me mm-hmm. or is it crazy that black folks are the only folks who are okay with going to a Chinese food restaurant and ordering their food and getting it from bulletproof glass? You're right. Like I went into the I went I went to the hood where I grew up, and I could not believe I went to the uh, in Germantown, Eddie. 
they have the mm-hmm. post office. And I didn't know how to work the thing because I'm used to seeing my friendly neighborhood postman handing him my pack. They're like, no, you have to lift this thing up and then put it in here and, and then put shut it, back it down. down yeah. I was like, what is this? Because mm-hmm. that didn't exist when I was growing up. Correct. Now it's, so it's like, are you fearing us, but you still embrace our money? Yes. Yes. And we're That's okay with exactly what it is. That's even exactly the bodegas on the corner, they uh, you have to walk outside to the window and then they open the little thing and they're like, That's at what night, do you need? though. That's yeah. usually only at night. That's at night. Yeah, that's usually at, at, yeah. at midnight. But it's like, it's maddening because then you'll fight people about the importance of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. You'll fight people about buying back the block. You'll fight people mm-hmm. about starting their own thing. Oh, it's too hard. You know what I'm saying? But like, look at what's happening mm-hmm. and then ask yourself, is this how you want your children to see? Is this the legacy you want to live for your kids? So if you're not about this, you need to come to BullyCon for real. There you have it. Well, Taz, we appreciate you're you. You're more your Instagrams and Twitters and all that yes, stuff. Yes, please. Too. Yes, indeed. So uh, Instagram, all that good stuff is the business bully. Uh, Twitter is DA business bully. You can text business bully, two words, to 31996. Standard text and data rates apply. <laughs> I still got it. All right. <laughs> Taz, we appreciate you, brother. Appreciate it's the Breakfast you. Club. Good morning.